What's up guys, it's Charles, MX Revival, mxrevival.com, and today we are filming episode two of the Mobile Moto Race Shop, whatever you wanna call it. And in episode two, we are going to be getting into the floors of this bad boy. As you can see, the trailer is bare. If you missed video one, you can go ahead and check it out right here. We're gonna go ahead and carry on with the actual build process of this trailer. I've never done this before. I don't have a clue what I'm doing. I have a vision in here. That's where it always starts. Thoughts become things, as they say, if you are determined enough. It looks to me like I need to remove some baseboards in this thing. Baseboards, just wood strips. They just have some finishing staples in them. And I'm probably gonna need a utility knife as well so I can cut some of the sealant or caulking they've put down. After that, it looks like I'm gonna have to sweep this thing out really well. Any debris I create when I'm taking the little baseboards off. And then I think I can pretty much get down to slapping the floors on the ground, tacking them in with a little hammer or however this thing works. Like I said, I don't have a clue what I'm doing, but it looks pretty easy. So we're gonna figure it out. Any of you pros that have done this or done things like it, go ahead and leave some tips in the comments below. If not for me, just to help everyone everyone else out, better the community, and anybody that might be willing to try this will have a better lead because of you. Thank you very much. Also, thanks for watching. Let's go grab a box of that flooring, lay it out on the floor in here so we can see what color it is. I'm really excited about the color. My wife even liked it. She said I did a good job, so that's how I know it's good. She is an interior designer by trade. That's what she does for a living, so I'm gonna go ahead and give myself a pat on the back, some kudos. We'll see if you guys like it. Let's go grab that box. So some of you guys saw this in the last video. That thing is freaking huge. I am pumped. But anyway, some of you guys saw this in the last video. I did a quick overview of what I got and all that sort of thing, where it came from. And so today we're actually gonna install it. I got this all at Home Depot. It was only 300 bucks for seven boxes of this stuff. Eight foot wide interior by 20 feet. It's 160 square feet. These are 24 square foot boxes. And so six and a half or so boxes gets the job done. Man, that stuff looks so good. What do you guys think? Oh, it's kind of sticky. All right, so it's got some kind of tongue and groove sort of stuff here. I guess I got like a peel and stick? I guess so. Like I said, who, who knows what's going on here? Okay, no, it's not sticky on the back. It is just sticky on this sort of uh, tongue and groove they have here. And so that's how the pieces are gonna snap together. Obviously this is underneath. This is the actual floor. I don't think there's any reason why I can't Slap that on the ground there. Man, that's gonna look good. Okay, so I guess the first step is going to be removing these wood strips. They just have little finishing staples in them. No big deal, they should come out really easy with a little uh, crow's foot or small crowbar, maybe even a flathead screwdriver. I'm also gonna have to go ahead and razor out with a utility knife this caulking here because it's holding these wood strips down somewhat in addition to that there's just a lot of you know debris metal shavings wood shavings what have you from when they built this trailer so i need to get all that out i need to blow this whole thing out sweep this whole thing out whatever it may be we're gonna make this happen this thing is gonna be badass i can already tell get some led lights in here some frp on the walls that's like that commercial kitchen shiny white kind of stuff with the seams every four feet it's gonna look amazing i can already see it so i'm really pumped okay so i believe these are the tricks of the trade pretty straightforward pretty basic we're gonna use the utility knife here to go ahead and cut the caulking we're gonna use this little crowbar may need something thinner but we're gonna go ahead and Tap underneath the baseboard, lift it up. I do not care if this stuff breaks. It probably will by the looks of it, but uh, we're not gonna need it. If you guys are worried about it and you wanna try and reuse your baseboards, then just make sure you take good care of them when you take them apart. We'll go ahead and start by just cutting this caulking here. Go ahead and break the little bond that it has and see if that does the trick. Oh yeah, like butter. It's not really breaking too bad either. That's it. Uh, we got a little straggler here. All right, so you guys are gonna need a pair of pliers or dikes or something too to get the staples that are left behind when they splinter away from the little wood strips. If you're wondering what dikes are, these side cutters, if you're a little sensitive. Pinch and pry up. And that's it. A piece like this, you may want to save for reference later on if you're putting a different kind of baseboard in. This would make a nice template for that piece you might have to cut and then reinstall. So as I make my way around the trailer, pulling off the baseboard, I notice I'm gonna have to pull out these D-rings. It looks like they're gonna be a carriage bolt where the back of this head of the bolt has a square on it so it holds itself. And on the bottom, there's probably a nut. So I'm gonna need to get under the trailer to pull those out. And then when I lay the flooring down, I'm gonna have to sort of trim the floor out to put these back in. The 
other thing is this trim strip here. They sell this at Home Depot also in tons of different sizes and shapes. It will need to come out. Oh, somebody spilled a whole bag of screws down in here. Check that out. Maybe I'll be able to use those on the build, huh? Check out this hot pregnant wife lady. What do you think of this whole... Yeah, that I... Oh, that hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I just poked the baby. That's baby Onyx. What do you think of this whole trailer thing? I think it's pretty neat. That's pretty neat. All right, so the baseboards are coming off super easy. Be sure to be prepared to clean up a huge mess of broken wood, staples, screws that were left behind when whoever built the trailer built the trailer. I'm finding stuff like that in the cracks along the wall. I know you guys dig my camera setup over here. All right, guys, it's the last piece. That's it. Another saver for later. So that probably took about, I don't know, 25 minutes. Very, very straightforward. That stuff is all out. I need to vacuum all the nooks and crannies. I need to sweep this thing out. I also didn't notice any deck screws, the screws holding the floor down that were sort of high that would prohibit the floor from laying flat. That was all really good. Everything was at least countersunk or just a bit lower. So no problems there. As mentioned, I have a little bit of caulking along the bottom of the floor to clean up. I'm not worried about it on the wheel wells because they're gonna get boxed in and enclosed by tool cabinets anyway. So I'll save time there where I can there's no point in scraping that stuff off only in areas where it's going to keep the floor from going flat but we got everything all the way around really really easy all right guys we're all vacuumed out you know what that means it's time to bring some flooring in here and see how we can lay this stuff out and start slapping this stuff in I'm really excited all right let's see what's inside this installation kit we got some parts we need to keep good spacing along the floor's edge where it meets walls and baseboards these are the spacers we need right here. So these little spacers are gonna go on the edge here. There's a, a thick side and a thin side, and we want the quarter inch side. So these spacers are actually gonna be difficult to use in the trailer because there's sort of a nothing to put these spacers against in the corner of the wall. So I'm gonna go ahead and square this thing up best I can on the edge of the existing plywood. And then I need to cut one down a little bit, about two thirds the length for the directions, say here, and we can start to stagger them. All right, so the total length is 36 inches. The directions say that you wanna cut two thirds of it off. So that's one foot, make a little mark with the razor, grab a straight edge, line it up with my one foot mark there, score the entire thing like so. And then it says you should be able to just snap it off. Yep. Breaks real easy. Okay, cool. Go ahead and just lay that in, I guess. Man, so they literally just stick together on these sticky edges here. So all these little short pieces I nip off are going to be perfect because I'm going to have to come up with something when I get to this front edge, this contoured edge. It's not perfectly straight, so I think those are going to come in very handy. All right, guys, so this floor moves around a lot. I'm going to go ahead and tack it down with a staple gun in areas where I know I'm not going to be able to see it later. Trying to keep this thing as square as I can because obviously I don't want the floor to be crooked, so. That should keep it from sliding around while I'm slapping new sticks together here. Oh yeah, coming along, looking good. I love this color, we're about halfway mark, so pretty sure when I get to the other side, it's gonna be hell all over again. I may or may not end up with a tile that needs to be cut. I keep calling them tiles, they're not tiles. You guys get what I mean? However, if it's a true eight feet wide, then I might end up perfect where I don't need to cut anything. Oh my God, guys. Doing this on a table is so much better than doing this on the ground. That freaking wears your knees out, it hurts. Guys, we are getting so close. I am into the end corner over here, a little two footer, and guess who got lucky? because the trailer is an exact eight foot wide and these are an exact six inch wide. I'm gonna be able to drop this right in. Pretty pumped about that. We're getting very, very, very close. Guys, we did it. We are dialed in. The floor is installed. It looks so, so good. I'm gonna go ahead and leave this front area blank because I'm probably gonna bring power and water in and water out through the floor in that dead space and then probably plasti dip everything up there so it's waterproof. Now I just need to do that lower step. Go ahead and trim back a little bit of that vinyl and throw down the trim strips. This one's not fastened yet, but it looks really, really good. This is just the one that came out of it earlier. To go ahead and use the same holes, same screws. Really came out super, super good. I'm pumped on it. Let me know what you guys think too. I wanna hear it. Guys, I'm at the point where I have a little bit of overlap here in the step that I need to buzz off. And I left this overhang specifically because I wanted to try out some new tools that Dremel sent me. Uh, really cool to receive their support. I've never actually used a Dremel tool before. So I think this is the perfect setting for that. And I also have these locations in the floor. If you guys remember, 
I had the D-rings here, so I'm gonna have to kind of drill a hole and then buzz this out. And I think that the Dremel will probably do a really good job doing that. So these guys right here, are, I think, are going to help me tremendously. Uh, one thing that was cool when we lined up this whole deal was that these are not corded tools, they're battery tools. So I need to get these suckers charging. This is gonna come in, I think, extremely handy. I'm excited to crack this open and check it out. It looks like it even has some attachments so you can use it like a drywall router. The saw has a little vacuum hooked up to right here. So I think this is gonna be really great for the walls when I do the FRP. And with the FRP, I think it's gonna be very dusty. So we'll find out if this little uh, vacuum attachment comes in here. That way I can hook it up to a vacuum. Pump to use this today. I'll probably try both of these. There's like a baby version of this. They're both battery tools. Let's get these open, get them charging. Take a look at what's inside and Dremel. Guys, I mean, thank you so much. I don't even feel like I deserve this. And this is not even half of what they sent. So kind of mind blowing to get their support. And so we'll start with the Dremel 8220 cordless 12 volt high performance rotary tool. Kind of like their classic Dremel, but with a battery. I think the older ones might have had cords on them. Some of you guys probably have your granddad's Dremel. These are rumored to last billions of years. So, oh, sweet. All right, cool. We'll be able to use this like a router. We'll be able to do uh, the floor. We'll be able to do uh, electrical junctions or electrical boxes in the wall. It'll be really great. All right, some bits. I don't even know what all these do. Looks like that's the tool to remove the bits. Some sanding wheels, some polishing wheels, cutting wheels. All right, instructions. You know we don't use instructions, we're men. So I gotta get these batteries charging. Boom. Woo! Might have enough juice in that one. What is an indicator right there? Oh, okay. It's got like a rheostat. You can ramp up or down the RPM. That's pretty badass. All right, let's check out the little guy. This is the Dremel Light. Cool, it's just a mini version of the big boy. So same thing, does it have a battery charger or this one just kind of plugs in? Okay, got like a micro USB charge port. That's really convenient. Most of my camera stuff has that. I could actually just unplug one of my millions of GoPro batteries and just snap this right in. I bet it would work. Yep. Green light, we are charging, that was easy. More than likely it comes with a charging cable too. Yep, there it is, just like a cell phone. Some, uh, oh look, a little bit of rouge, some polishing compound. If I put that on these little buffing wheels, you're cleaning up some metal, trying to polish it. A little sander, little uh, bit tool for the collet, a couple little bits. Any of you guys know what this is? I have literally no clue whatsoever what this does. All right, guys, I know I'm guilty about not reading instructions, but when you're doing something like this, you're gonna make dust and debris, the tools of the trade, safety glasses, and some sort of a dust mask. Well, it's official, this thing kicks ass. A little bit messy, guys, so if you have a vacuum handy, which we do, we'll go ahead and start using that with this little router. Something like that. Yeah, that'll look great. All right, guys, next on my list, I need to go ahead and use the router on the floor and the locations, the four locations where I had those D-rings, the tie-down points in the trailer. As I was cutting the floor, I put in little marks with a Sharpie so I'd know where to start drilling and then route out later. I wasn't sure if I was gonna do that with a razor blade, but now I'm definitely doing it with the Dremel. This thing absolutely shreds. Thank you guys so much for sending this out. Of course, as this trailer build goes on, there's gonna be tons more opportunities to use it. <laughs> Yeah, like a glove. So I'm gonna get this as square as I can and then mark the holes with the Sharpie, pilot them with a small bit and then the actual bolt itself, the carriage bolt. I was trying to explain that little square on the back of the bolt earlier that holds itself in the plate. Then I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with the 5 16 bit. All right, guys, it's actually coming out pretty damn cool. I'm starting to get excited. The floor, the color, it looks amazing. It's super easy to put down. I hope you guys give this a shot. It doesn't have to be in a trailer. You could go ahead and put it on a concrete slab in your existing shop. I think you'd be really happy. It looks so, so good. Other than that, next step is I have to get all these walls off. I need to go ahead and check out my tools, lay them out where I want to put them, and then go ahead and figure out the power requirements so that I can rough in these walls after removing them, rough in electrical. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget 
forget to like, consider subscribing. In addition to this whole out of the blue trailer thing I got going on, typically there are a lot of bike builds, product tests, and just general fun moto stuff. So I appreciate you guys hanging with me today. Stay tuned for episode three of this trailer build. Like I said, we'll be doing the walls, removal, or electrical, FRP. That's the plan anyways. And until next time, I appreciate every single one of you. Thanks for watching. I will see you soon.